welcome to the video on the digestive system. Um, this figure shows the organs of the digestive system, and we'll go through them. But first we need to know the overall functions of the digestive system. So on the left there we have a food processor blade, which breaks down food. And that is one of the functions of your digestive system. It breaks down food. Um, and then on the right we have a sponge that is absorbing water. Your digestive system absorbs nutrients. So break down food and absorb nutrients are the main functions of the digestive system. Alright, next we need to know the two types of digestion. So mechanical digestion is breaking food into smaller pieces, as in chewing. Um, civilized people do this with a knife and fork as well. Um, then chemical digestion is using enzymes to break food into nutrients that cells can use. So that's um, breaking bonds, and we'll we'll look at that more in detail later on. Next, we need to know what the enteric nervous system is. So it consists of 500 million neur neurons and uses more than 30 neurotransmitters, most of which are identical to those used in the brain. So it's often called the second brain. And it participates in two-way communication with the brain and affects mood and behavior. So they say you are what you eat. Uh, if you eat junk, you may feel junky. And if you eat healthy, you'll probably feel better. Um, it can function independently, even without input from the central nervous system. So for example, when you eat, your stomach's going to stretch out, and there are receptors that detect that and send signals to cause uh, different enzymes to be released, and your brain doesn't even know about that, which is a good thing. We don't have to think about that. So the enteric nervous system basically controls the digestive system, and it's, it's an automatic system. We don't have to think about it. All right, next is the path that food has to travel through the digestive system. So it starts in the mouth, then it will travel through the pharynx, then the esophagus, then the stomach, then the small intestine, then the large intestine, and then out the rectum and anus. So it goes mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, anus. All right, next we need to know the function of the mouth. So it's an entryway, and it's where mechanical and chemical digestion begin. Um, the teeth primarily are doing the mechanical digestion, and then chemical digestion is the enzymes and saliva. Next is the function of the salivary glands, and they make saliva. Saliva moistens food and makes it easier to swallow. Um, and then next we'll talk about the enzymes in saliva. You have amylase, which breaks down starch, and lipase, which breaks down fat. All right, now we need to know primary function of the teeth. So the teeth uh, break down food, tear it into smaller pieces, so uh, mechanical digestion. And you have a question, which enzymes acts in the mouth to begin the breakdown of starch? And the correct answer is amylase. Then we need to know the function of the pharynx. So um, when you swallow, that's when food goes into the pharynx. So it's really a passageway for food. Uh, then the esophagus takes food from the pharynx down to the stomach. And then the stomach, its primary function is to hold food, store food. There is uh, some mechanical and some chemical digestion that happens in the stomach. Um, and then it releases food slowly into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. Um, this shows the muscle layers around the stomach. Most of the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, or digestive tract has two muscle layers. The stomach has a third muscle layer, um, this oblique layer, that allows it to uh, be more powerful and do contractions to mix the food. Um, next we're going to look at the stomach secretions. So first, mucus protects the stomach lining. The pH in the stomach is very, very low. And, but there's a mucus layer that protects the cells so that it doesn't digest itself. 
Uh, next we have hydrochloric acid, which kills microbes in the swallowed food. It also prepares food for digestion. Then we have pepsinogen, uh, which breaks down proteins. Then we have ghrelin, which is a hormone, which increases appetite, so this might be released when your stomach is empty. And then we have gastrin, another hormone that stimulates secretion of gastric juice and also the motility of the stomach. So this is going to be released when your stomach is full. And here's a close-up on what's called a gastric pit. So you can see the mucus cells would be secreting mucus. Parietal cells secrete the acid. And they actually secrete it as hydrogen ions and chloride ions so that it doesn't um, dissolve the gastric pit and then when it gets out into the stomach they combine to form the acid uh, the parietal cells would be releasing the pepsinogen and then these enteroendocrine cells would be releasing the ghrelin and the gastrin all right the formation and movement of chyme contractions will break down food and mix it with gastric juices to form chyme and this chyme moves toward the pyloric sphincter about 30 milliliters at a time squirts into the duodenum um, that allows the duodenum to digest that food before more comes the stomach continues to mix the contents and gradually releases chyme into the duodenum so the four phases of gastric secretion first we have the cephalic phase so the sight the smell taste or thought of food causes the stomach to secrete gastric juice and gastrin. Uh, it will also activate your salivary glands, so walking by a pizza place, for example, might make you hungry. So that one's controlled by the brain. Next phase is the gastric phase. So when food enters the stomach, it stretches. This causes secretion of gastric juice and gastrin to increase. Um, that phase is controlled by the stomach. And then third, you have the intestinal phase. When chyme enters the duodenum, this causes gastric secretion to be inhibited. Uh, the intestines need time to process that food before any more is released. <coughs> Next, we need to know about peptic peptic ulcers. Symptoms are gnawing or burning pain in the stomach between meals or at night, so when the stomach is empty. Uh, also bloating and heartburn and it's caused by a bacterial infection most bacteria are killed by the low pH in the stomach but there's one called H. pylori that can survive in a very acidic environment and cause these so those can be treated with antibiotics NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen if you take too many of them they can interfere with the mucus production and then the cells lining the stomach are protected and that could also cause ulcers all right next we have the liver which has over 200 functions um, for the digestive system we'll just focus on one if we look inside the liver it's made up of these lobules and if we look even closer um, we'll see this is the hepatic portal well this is a branch of the hepatic portal vein so remember um, blood is going to flow through the mesenteric arteries and it's going to pick up nutrients in the small intestine and then it flows to the hepatic portal vein which brings it to the liver. The hepatic artery brings oxygen to the liver and then all these are liver cells. Um, and so they may, depending on the conditions, they may absorb glucose or release glucose into the blood. They also, these green things here are called canaliculi. These liver cells produce bile, which is necessary for the digestion of fats. So it produces bile. Um, and then that bile will flow through here, these right and left hepatic ducts, to the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores and concentrates bile because the liver is constantly producing bile, but you're not constantly eating. so the gallbladder can store it and then release it after a meal, especially after a very greasy meal. And then the bile salts aid in digestion and absorption of fats. Um, 
most of the things we eat can dissolve in water and that makes them easier to digest. Fat does not dissolve in water so that's why we need the bile salts to help break them down into smaller pieces and so we can digest them. Um, next is gallstones. So the symptoms may include pain um, and possibly jaundice if the stone blocks this. Common bile duct, it can back up into the liver and then that will cause jaundice which is like your eyes and your skin turn yellow. Um, the treatment will depend on where they are. You might have to have your gallbladder removed or there are medicines to dissolve gallstones. Alright, next we have the pancreas. We talked about its endocrine function before, making insulin and glucagon. For, but most of it is actually devoted to the digestive system, and it secretes pancreatic juice, which is digestive enzymes, and an alkaline fluid, and it releases those into the small intestine, here and here. So remember, coming from the stomach, it's very acidic, um, so that's why we need an alkaline fluid to neutralize all that acid. Uh, the pH in the small intestine is about 8, and that allows the um, enzymes there to work properly. So that's the pancreas. Uh, next we need to know the small intestine. So most chemical digestion and nutrient absorption occurs in the small intestine. The first part is the duodenum, and so that's where most of the chemical digestion happens. And then the next segment, the longest segment, is the jejunum, which is where most nutrient absorption happens. And then the last segment is the ileum, that's where you'd have the pyrus patches monitoring any bacteria that made it this far. And there are different contractions in the small intestine. On the left you can see a segmentation. These are ring-like contractions and they are going to break up the food and mix it with digestive juices so this is part of uh, mechanical digestion and then peristalsis is these wave-like ripples you can see the arrows moving down the digestive tract so that's how food moves through the digestive tract so you can digest food even if you are standing on your head all right what is the purpose of the gallbladder and the correct answer is that it stores bile. Um, pancreatic enzymes are secreted by the pancreas, which also produces digestive enzymes. And the bile is produced by the liver, but stored in the gallbladder. All right, if we look at the lining of the intestines, we see these circular folds, which greatly increase the surface area. And then on top of that, we see villi. So if we look even closer at one villi, see there are blood vessels in it and then there's a screen thing which is a lacteal part of the lymphatic system so most nutrients are absorbed directly into capillaries um, but again fats do not dissolve in water so they're absorbed by the lacteal and then they travel through the lymphatic system uh, eventually to the blood Next, we're going to talk about chemical digestion and absorption. So this uses digestive enzymes. Again, it's chemical digestion. And it transforms food molecules into particles that can be absorbed. So for example, breaking a disaccharide into a monosaccharide like glucose that can be absorbed. This occurs mostly in the small intestine. And the process varies between nutrients. We're going to look at some of those nutrients, um, starting with carbohydrates. So car chemical digestion of carbohydrates starts in the mouth with the enzyme amylase uh, hydrolyzing polysaccharides into disaccharides uh, it continues in the small intestine with pancreatic amylase because um, once the once it goes into the stomach the salivary amylase will be inactivated uh, and then the process the final step in carbohydrate digestion takes place at the villi uh, the enzymes sucrase, lactase, and maltase break disaccharides into monosaccharides like glucose, which can be absorbed into the blood. Then protein digestion begins in the stomach with the enzyme pepsin, hydrolyzing uh, the peptide bonds. 
in the small intestine, trypsin and chymotrypsin break peptide bonds. And then finally, brush border or villi enzymes called peptidases break the remaining chains into amino acids, which are absorbed into the bloodstream. Then most fat digestion occurs in the small intestine. It does a little bit in the mouth with salivary lipase. Uh, when a fat globule enters the duodenum, two substances in bile, lecithin and bile salts, break up the fat into small droplets. That's called emulsification, because if the fat is in a huge glob, the enzymes really can't get to it and they can't do anything. So first we have to break it into smaller droplets because it doesn't want to dissolve in the water. Uh, then the enzyme pancreatic lipase begins to digest the fat and it breaks it into smaller pieces. Um, glycerol and short chain fatty acids are absorbed into the blood. Triglycerides are bigger. They enter the lacteal and they'll travel through the lymphatic system to the blood um, and they'll um, join the blood in the subclavian veins. Now let's talk about the large intestine. Uh, its primary function is absorbing water. There are also uh, bacteria that live in the small intestine and they break down some nutrients that we can't, um, such as cellulose from plants. Our bodies don't have enzymes to break it down, but these bacteria can, and they actually produce some vitamins for us, such as vitamin K. Unfortunately, they also make gases. Um, so next time someone gets angry at you for farting, say it's not my fault, it's the bacteria living in my intestine, and they will still get mad at you and they'll call you a nerd. All right, we're going to end with this animation on the process of digestion. It's a good overview of the whole process. The digestive system performs the vital task of transforming food into chemicals that cells can absorb and use for energy. The digestive system breaks down food into its simplest components. It then absorbs these components so they can be distributed throughout the body. The process of digestion begins in the mouth, where food is broken into pieces. Saliva secreted by the salivary glands, moistens the food and transforms it into a mass called a bolus that can be swallowed easily. Enzymes in the saliva begin the breakdown of starch and fat. As the bolus is swallowed, the soft palate lifts to close off the nasopharynx as the epiglottis covers the entrance to the trachea. Food moves through the oropharynx and laryngopharynx and into esophagus. The bolus travels down the esophagus and enters the stomach, a muscular sac whose primary function is to store food. The stomach also prepares food for digestion. The stomach contracts and churns to break food into small particles and to mix it with gastric juice, creating a semi-fluid mixture called chyme. Chyme leaves the stomach through the pylorus sphincter and enters the duodenum of the small intestine. Descending 